All right, and I think I'm gonna get started. So my name is Amanda Carlson, and I am a massage therapist in the uh, Southern Maine area. I've been here for about eight years practicing. Um, and of course, COVID-19 has thrown quite, um, thrown us all for quite a loop, especially for any of us who are doing hands-on work. So um, I know that, well, ha a lot of my job has typically been working um, in offices doing chair massage uh, for people. And that m many of us are working from home now. So um, ho I'm hoping that this presentation can give those of you working from home some idea of how to get at some of the tension that you're probably feeling from stress and chronic use. Um, feel free, I don't have the chat box open because I'm screen sharing, so anything that I'm opening on my screen you can see, um, but feel free to um, pop any questions you have into the chat. I'll pull it up at the end and address as many as I can. Um, also, Andrea is going to be um, adding her email into the chat. If you're interested in a copy of the um, PowerPoint, I'm going to make that available to her so she can send it out. The PowerPoint was designed for a bit of a longer session, so I'm going to skip through a lot of the, um, a, pretty quickly, a lot of the slides, um, but they'll be available if you want to look at them later or look further into it on your own time. Um, so without further ado, I will get moving. Um, so I'm, sh I'm just going to skip through a lot of these signs of stress, the physical, um, the way that stress manifests physically and mentally. I'm sure we're all experiencing quite a bit of that. Um, some of the physical responses to stress that we are experiencing uh, more specifically in our organs and um, all of our systems. Um, and this is just a really great example of um, the difference between the fight or flight and rest and digest system, um, the nervous system. Uh, it affects all of our organs and um, there's a lot going on in our lives where we're constantly in the fight or flight. Um, our, our bodies are constantly in a fight or flight system and it can that fight or flight can be triggered by the way that we're sitting, the way that we're breathing, the way that our muscles are behaving, or by our thoughts. Um, and so we can turn it off uh, and turn on the rest and digest system uh, in a couple of ways, by, by the way that we use our bodies and the way that we use our thoughts. Um, being a massage therapist, I'm going to approach it right now with more of how we are using our bodies. And one of the most important ways um, to do that is with our breath. So we breathe a lot during the day, I hope. And um, here's just some numbers for you. So if we're breathing and we're not using the muscle that we're meant to be using uh, for, for breath, which is our diaphragm muscle, what happens is our, our shoulders and our neck muscles start to help out. It just so happens that when we're in fight or flight, um, those are the muscles that uh, the chest and the neck um, all around the chest cavity, those are meant to help to, to, to like activate. Um, so what happens is when we're newborns, um, we breathe with our diaphragm naturally. You'll see if you see a, um, an infant uh, breathing, you'll see their belly raises up and down as they breathe. At some point in, um, in life, we're meant to believe that we are not supposed to stick out our belly. Um, so we kind of train ourselves in a way to use our chest muscles, which unfortunately also happens to tell our body that we're in danger. We start to breathe more quickly, uh, more shallowly. So one of the best ways um, to take care of a whole bunch of tension and also just to uh, activate that rest and digest system is to retrain your diaphragm. And the best ways to, one of the best ways to do that is if you're able to lie down on the floor um, and put your hand on your belly, you can do this after, you don't have to do it right now if you're not able to, um, but put your hand on your belly and when you inhale, your hand should raise and when you exhale, your hand should um, fall down towards you. Um, it, if, if you're not used to 
to um, breathing that way, it can feel uncomfortable for a while, but continuing to try to do that um, is what will strengthen it. You can also then put a book on your belly to, to really um, get that muscle strengthened. Um, and I do a lot, of, a lot of the work that I do when I'm working with clients um, is to help them find out how they're breathing. I might have my hands on their shoulders while they inhale so they can feel if when they take an inhale, their shoulders raise. Um, we're trying to keep their shoulders down during that, during that time. So um, this is related to just ways in which we're using our bodies that may be causing repetitive, um, repetitive use injuries or strains um, or tension in our hands and the way that we hold our, our, um, our head and our shoulders. Um, you know, a lot of us tend to kind of like uh, slump forward a little bit like that. Um, and if we're doing that and breathing with our neck, so those muscles are going to get really, really tight. Um, if you think about, if you think about holding, um, a bowling ball in your, in your, on your hand with your, with your forearm straight up and down, um, and you think about holding that for a very long time, if your arm is straight up and down and, and it's, um, nicely balanced, it's not going to hurt for for a while. It'll get heavy after a little while. But if you just move that arm an inch forward, think about how how much more strain that is on your forearm. If you have, if you have a bowling ball in your hand, and that's the way to imagine the strain in your neck. If this the strain in your neck, if your head is even just a little bit more forward, um, you don't even notice it's happening. So, and right now we're on our phones a lot. We're using FaceTime a lot. So we're holding our phones in front of us for, for sometimes hours every day. And we're not noticing that we're doing a really intense isometric movement with that, with that arm while we're on FaceTime or Zoom with, with our phone. That's gonna go all the way up your arm into your neck. Um, and of course, the way we sleep. Um, things we don't really think about that, that are likely causing a lot of pain and, and uh, tension. <clears throat> this is just kind of what we're talking about when we talk about pressure points. We're going to talk about acupressure points and we're going to talk about trigger points. Acupressure is um, not necessarily where my training is. It's just an interesting thing and it's useful. Um, but I my training is primarily with the trigger point, but I just wanted to show both um, both kinds of points here because um, th they're helpful. <laughs> so um, before we get into that, especially if you're participating at home, um, I wanted to go over some safety considerations. And of course, if you have questions or concerns, um, it is important that you check in with your doctor to make sure that um, it's safe for you to try these things. Cleanliness, of course, first. So we're going to be using our hands near our faces um, and in our heads in, in this demonstration. So please wash your hands if you're participating for the full 20 seconds or use a good um, hand sanitizer um, with at least 70% alcohol. So that's the one I'm going to do right now. Um, make sure if you're using hand sanitizer that, uh, that the sanitizer dries on your hands before you're putting that near your face. So a quick note on contraindications. There aren't many for massage um, typically, but there are some and the ones that exist are important to, to know. Um, if you, I'm just gonna give a couple of examples. And again, if you are concerned that you may have a contraindication, please, um, please check with your doctor. So um, if you have brittle bones, if you have osteoporosis and such, um, you definitely don't wanna be working very deeply um, or very firmly. Uh, you want your therapist to know that if you're working with a therapist, but also at home, uh, you wanna be just gentle with the amount of pressure. I'm just adjusting the, um, gotta adjust that a little bit. So um, another one that's, another contraindication that's 
become a bit more important for massage therapists right now because of COVID-19 are blood clotting disorders. So if you have blood clots or um, blood thinning disorder, it's something to really make your therapist um, aware of if you're working with massage therapists, but also if you're doing work on yourself, just make sure that you're able to do it, run that by your, your um, primary care physician. So um, blood clotting disorders seems to be a complication post COVID infection for a lot of people. And we don't wanna loosen up um, a clot um, when, we're doing, when we're doing the work. Um, medications, an example of a medication that could be um, a safety issue is if you are taking a medication that prevents, um, that's meant to be for pain, um, it could prevent you from feeling when you or your therapist are working too deeply. Um, and so that's just an important thing to think about as an example. All right. So acupressure, this again, I'm just gonna skip over it, but it's available. Um, you're welcome to um, read through these things when, if you're interested in receiving the, the PowerPoint. Um, these are, this is sort of the way the body is seen. Um, it, this is kind of the traditional Chinese medicine um, paradigm. And um, then now I have that up on the top, left here and on the bottom is the, the nervous system, the way that I've studied it. Um, but it's interesting to kind of think about the compare and contrast between these two uh, paradigms. It's a, there's a deep dive into that, so I won't get, I won't get into that right now. But um, we're gonna do pressure points first. So this is more of the tra uh, traditional Chinese medicine view of how to treat and, and locate points that can relieve um, pressure. Specifically, um, for the most part, headaches we're gonna think about today. So all of these points are meant to sort of help relieve a headache, <clears throat> but we're not gonna go over all of them. And each point, the initials and then the number is related to the meridian and then this, the, the point on the meridian where you'll find it. And each point also, um, has a more poetic um, name, which is translated here in some of these slides. Um, I won't go over all of that either, but we can start now locating these points. So this one, GV16, is located um, right in the center of the skull in the back. And um, a good way to get there, you can um, put your thumbs together and cradle them right right at the base of your skull. There's a little um, divot right in the center there. Um, and I like to use just one thumb because I can get in there a little deeper. You're sort of pressing in and up a little bit. And you can uh, tip your head back as you do that. Um, you can do this for several minutes. Feels pretty, feels pretty good. Um, it's, it's meant to clear your head. Um, reset your nervous system, relieve some mental stress. Um, the next one is located just lateral of where we were. So starting where we were and moving outwards, um, you'll kind of go over the hill on either side of your trapezius muscle and into a divot on either side of each um, each muscle area there. Um, and then you can take both thumbs and uh, rest in, rest your head back and into that. Again, moving sort of in and up in this case. Um, so that's really nice for headaches. Again, take some nice deep breath with your diaphragm if you're able to let some of that tension melt away. <clears throat> and this spot right between um, right between the eyes, um, this is a really nice one if you're feeling tired and fatigued, um, if you've been looking at a screen for too long throughout your day, you can get at it with your thumb or with a, or with a finger right at the right um, 
in the middle of your nose, pointing, sort of pressing up. And another really nice way to get to it is to um, place your palms together. And this, the, your index fingers create a nice little chair for the bridge of your forehead there. And you can just rest forward into that and take some nice deep breaths. It feels great. It's really relaxing. Um, and you can hold it for several minutes. If you're having a headache, if you're feeling anxious or dizzy, um, it's, it's very, very relaxing. <clears throat> and here again, just lateral of that point, we've got sort of right where your eyebrows start. There's a little, you can feel it with your fingers. There's a little divot there. Um, and if you've got some sinus congestion, um, if you've got a headache that's related to that kind of congestion, that's a really good spot to, to um, stimulate. You don't want it to hurt. You don't need to like um, press so hard that you're in pain. These points are just gentle, um, gentle pressure relieving um, points. The trigger point um, is, is slightly a different approach. This one should feel, it might feel a little bit tender, but it shouldn't, there shouldn't be any pain. And these points where we just were, you can see that at the forehead, but then there's a couple of points here um, underneath the cheekbone. That's uh, again, really great for sinus if you have sinus pressure, congestion. So you can use two fingers and get both of those points at the same time. Um, or just one at a time, right by the base of your, um, or right by uh, lateral of your nostrils, and then just one other finger down. You can get two fingers in there. And then, you know, you can get, you, you, so I guess you could try to get one here and one here if you're feeling, if you're feeling crazy. Um, but there's no, you know, it, it's kind of like, whatever you're feeling you need um, at any given moment, whatever's working. Um, this point, if we ever end up in uh, a group meeting again, this point is a little, a little more um, subtle. So um, you, can, you can do it while you're sitting um, with a group of people. But if you are pregnant, um, please skip this one. It is believed that this point can stimulate um, uterine contractions. So unless you're going for that, skip it. Um, but the way to locate it is thinking about the bone um, of your index finger between the wrist and your first, this, this knuckle here, the, this first knuckle. Find the point directly in the middle of that and put your thumb there out um, so that your, the tip of your thumb is pressing in towards the bone. And then take the index finger of your other hand and squeeze right there. So this is meant to also relieve headache, anxiety, it's supposed to strengthen the immune system, which is a great thing to be doing right now. And you can, <clears throat> it, there, it's just a very small space, but you can massage it a little, just in tiny, you know, make tiny uh, movements um, perpendicular to that, to that bone. Um, so that's the end of the acupressure. Those are the, those are the acu acupressure points that we're going to go over. Um, and the next sec uh, section is where I'm talking more about um, trigger point, which is more where my training um, lies. But I'm going to skip over some of this information here, how the muscles look, how they're put together, how the tissues look. And even here, if you're interested in trigger points um, and you do a search, you'll see a lot of mapping that looks like this, where you're just kind of getting a sense of where a point is as, as opposed to all of the areas in which you might actually be feeling pain from that point. Um, and there's, there's quite a lot to it, but in the not too distant past, someone realized that there was, um, th there seemed to be some consistency in where people were feeling pain um, and they mapped it out for us, which was, which is lovely. So here's looking a, a bit more closer at some specific um, muscles and where we might be feeling pain. Again, thinking about headaches, upper body pain. Here's, this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Um, it's 
got two branches, one that comes directly um, attaching to your sternum um, and the other attaching to your clavicle and um, connecting at your mastoid bone um, at the base of your skull here. Um, so you can see where these X's are is where the origin of your pain may be and where the red is is where you may be feeling the pain. Um, so when you press, if that is the case when you're pressing or when a therapist is pressing on these areas, you might be feeling it in your head. Um, a lot of times I'll be working on a client and they can, they, you know, in, in their neck and they might be, they might say, I can feel that all the way in my brain. So that is a clear indication of a, of a trigger point. Now when I'm doing work with trigger points, I tend to work um, a bit more deeply um, and a therapist um, may give you a, a pain scale from zero to 10, 10 being like you're going to black out from the pain, um, nine being childbirth or kidney stone um, type pain. Um, you, want the, you want to get around a six or a seven when you're working on a, um, on a trigger point and hold it and breathe until that gets down a few points, at least to like a four, maybe a five or less, ideally, in order to know if you're releasing it. Um, this is the muscle levator scapula. It raises your shoulder. It levates your scapula, if you will. Um, and you can see where the X's are as opposed to where you're, you may be experiencing pain or feeling pain. Um, and this muscle gets tight very often. Um, we raise our shoulders when we're, uh, just automatically when we're stressed or feeling anxious, um, a defensive movement also against cold. So here in New England, in the wintertime, I have a lot of people with very tight levator scapulae. Um, and um, if you're carrying a bag or a briefcase on one shoulder, um, that can cause an imbalance in those muscles as well. If you're sleeping like this, um, that can happen. So lots of, lots of things can get that. Um, that situation going and I have a later I'll show you a tool that's really great to get at those spots because um, it's it's tricky to get at on your own unless you have something to work with. <clears throat> Splenius capitis. This is where a lot of people feel it in their brain when I'm working on the back of their head and it's just right up at the top of their skull feeling feeling pain. Um, so, and I have another tool that I can show you how to get to that one as well. Um, and we're at that section now. So I'm making pretty good time. I'm gonna show you a demonstration, then I'll probably have time for a couple of questions. I know we're ending at 1.30 um, is my understanding. So this is a Theracane. You can find these tools very easily online if you're, if you're wanting to to get one. So this is what the Theracane looks like. This is the one that's really great to get at levator scapula. There are these um, knobs here and some handles. And um, so you, if you wanna get right here where at the top of your shoulder, um, and you, with any of these tools, you just wanna be careful about bony prominences, your spine, you know, you'll notice if it's in the wrong spot. Also, um, if you're using tools or any, or working in any way on um, relieving tension with your muscles and you feel a sharp shooting pain, the kind of pain that you feel when you hit your elbow, that is nerve pain. And we want to immediately move off of that. That's not the kind of pain um, that's included in, um, in what we're trying to accomplish to relieve the pain. So, um, okay. So again, here we have the um, top of the shoulder. You can press that knob into there and then pull down on, on these handles. Um, it's just a really great way to get at that muscle, which is hard to otherwise get at. Um, but you can, you can get to a lot of different muscles with this. And if you get one, it comes with um, a little booklet to help, to help you understand how to learn it. I really love to get at the base of my skull um, with just the bar and these uh, smaller knobs um, at the outside of where, where we were, where I was showing you the um, acupressure point, acu, um, yeah, acupressure points, the, those little hills of your um, trapezius. 
um, I can kind of pull in on that and feel quite a bit of relief. So I really love, I use this all the time. I really love it. Um, a yoga block at the moment, I just have this one. So, and I do also use this quite a bit. Um, I will use it as if, as if there is a, as if behind me is the floor and I'm lying down and in front of me is the ceiling. I'll um, place the block so that this ridge is just under the base of my skull and the rest of it is going um, straight down my spine. And that just gives you again some relief um, of those points at the base of your skull, the, the occipital ridge. And, um, and then your chest opens nicely over the block. If I have two blocks, I'll have one block like this and the other one underneath it sort of creating a T and the top of the T I'll have here and then the bottom of the T will be going down my spine. That's a great way to just gently open and also get some, some pressure point, some, um, basically more, more of like an acupressure point level pain relief um, along the base of the skull there. And lastly, I have lacrosse balls, super cheap. Um, I use these things, they're nice and firm. You can get um, um, tennis balls if you need a lighter pressure. Just put them in a spot where you feel like you need to break up some of the tension. You can lie on the floor or lean against a wall. Um, if you can't quite, if this is an awkward thing for you to reach around and then get to a wall, you can use a sock. So I've got one in here already. We've all got socks that don't have a match and this is a great use for that. So you just put the, put the lacrosse ball to the bottom of the sock, sling it around, get it to where you want and lean onto a wall. I also like to use two, um, shake it down in there, then tie it. And now in the center here is where your spine goes. You put it on the back of your head. You can just lay there and um, shake your head yes and no. Um, I once participated in a, at a yoga studio in a class that was called ball rolling and essentially the tools were this. Um, and we lay on the floor and we moved this situation down our spine from the base of our skull to the top of our hips. And we took an hour to do it. And when it was in the center of your back, you can kind of move your arms around to get, to break the tension down a bit more. Um, and then just keep moving it a couple of minutes for each spot. It took us 60 minutes to get from here to there. And it felt like I just had a a back massage for 60 minutes. It was amazing. So um, that is the last demonstration. I have a, a couple minutes for questions. So I'm going to open up the chat box and see if anybody has anything for me. Oh, okay. Looks like somebody couldn't see me, but then they, they got it. Um, okay. Demoing the cane for a hip muscle. So depending on what kind of hip muscle, um, all right, I'm going to get up here a little bit. Hopefully you can see me. Um, the one that connects to the spine. So maybe the um, piriformis one. So I would probably uh, get the cane behind me to where it is and uh, pull forward a bit. Um, so the, the cane is pulling forward. But I, I'm not sure if that's the right, that's it. Okay, good, piriformis, <laughs> got it, awesome. So yeah, you can do that with, it, with this. I almost would prefer to use this and lay on it if you're able to. Um, you can use one or, or both of them to get, um, to get uh, the length of the muscle. So, Sorry, you had to see that, but um, hopefully that was helpful. And uh, again, um, there are some, if you want the cane there, I think the little booklet comes with um, some demonstrations for that muscle and, and others as well that, are, that might be a little more clear than what I just did. <laughs> um, any more questions? All right. I think. I think we're good. Got another minute left if anyone has one, any more questions. Otherwise, 
Thank you so much for being here. Uh, why do muscles get knots? Okay, I can, this is, this is, uh, if you, if you need to go, please feel free to um, log off. Oh, thank, you're welcome, Kate. Um, feel free to log off. I'm looking at Dawn here. She has a question. After this question, I'll log off. Um, muscles get knots because the fibers, um, one of the reasons is the fibers get kind of stuck together. A muscle is meant to, um, the fibers of a muscle are meant to slide through each other in contraction and slide out of each other when they're relaxed. Um, sometimes they get caught in the middle and literally do kind of get um, messed up with each other. So um, that's one reason we get a knot. Another reason is that there's connective tissue around our muscle fibers that sometimes um, gets stuck um, so that the muscle, the muscle fibers within that connective tissue um, isn't allowing movement of the muscles themselves. That's in a nutshell. Um, I did have more, I did go over that more specifically. Uh, I, I didn't in this, in this presentation, but typically I do. So thanks for asking that question. It makes me, um, it's, it's one of my favorite things to talk about, but I don't have any more time. So I'm going to, oh, you're welcome, Don. Um, so I'm gonna log out and I'm really grateful to see all of the participants, I wish I could see your faces, but it's nice to know you're all there and I hope this was helpful. Thank you.